Get out your King James Bibles and open to Hebrews chapter 11. This is going to be, I guess it's sort of kind of part two of the suffering for Christ. Hebrews chapter 11 is oftentimes called the faith chapter of the Bible. Now, the author of Hebrews is unknown. Most scholars that I would trust would attribute it to Paul. Now, you've got to understand something. The apostles that Jesus picked were tax collectors, fishermen. You know, they were not Bible scholars of the, of the, you know, what we call the Old Testament. I mean, they were unlearned. They didn't know anything. However, Paul, Paul was brought up at the feet of Gamaliel, who was a learned rabbi that had People respected him, Christians and non, uh, the Jews. So Paul was a scholar. Paul was most definitely qualified to write the book of Hebrews. Now the book of Hebrews basically sums up why the New Covenant is better than the Old Covenant. The book of Hebrews should be read in connection with the book of Leviticus, which Leviticus was the book for the Levite or Levitical priesthood. There were 12 tribes, the tribe of Levi, of which Moses and Aaron, you know, when the Lord took everybody out of Egypt in the book of Exodus, they were the priests that served God whereas King David was of the tribe of Judah, which was the tribe of the kings. So you had the governmental civil ruler, the kings, and then you had the priests who served God in the temple, doing sacrifices and what have you. So, just a little background. So let's get started on Hebrews chapter 11. Now, faith is the substance substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are, are seen were not made of things which do appear. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. In other words, the things that were made were made by the Lord that's invisible, right? By faith. Ah, the faith chapter. By faith, Abel, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. See, Abel offered a sacrifice of a lamb or a sheep, Cain didn't give an off a sacrifice. He gave an offering of fruit. There's a difference between a sacrifice and an offering. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witnesses, witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. So, how can that be? And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Well, the answer to that is in Genesis chapter 4. Oh, well, let's see, verse 8. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. Killed him, right? And like a good prosecuting attorney, the Lord asks Cain a question, but he already knows the answer. You know, that, that's the thing. 
uh, a good attorney will never ask a question that he does not already know the answer to because they want to catch you in a lie. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. The voice of thy brother's blood crieth unto me from the the ground. Ah, now does that make sense? By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. See, Abel was dead, but yet his blood cried from the ground. You ever hear the Jehovah's Witnesses say, ah, well, when you die, you know nothing. And then they say, oh, soul sleep, soul sleep. Well, is that true? Let's find out. Now, in the book of Revelation, the this is during the time of the plagues, God's wrath upon the earth. Revelation chapter 6 and verse 9. And when he had opened the fifth seal... So we're getting close to the, you know, the seals, the vials, the trumps. This is getting close to the end. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice. So here it is, you got the souls of those that were killed for the word of God. They're under the altar. Then verse 10, it says, And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost, thus, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Soul sleep? Uh, well, if these souls are sleeping, how come they're crying out for vengeance against those that killed them under the altar of God? Ask a Jehovah's Witness that, and he'll watch his head spin. Verse 11. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren, that they should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Need another witness? How about Jesus in Matthew 23, verse 33? Who's Jesus speaking to here? Ye serpents. Ooh. Ye generation of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets and wise men, and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues. Who hangs out in the synagogues, people? And some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel, Ooh, unto the blood of Zacharias, son of Barchias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Now, do we believe Jesus, or do we believe the United Nations creation in 1948 of the Zionist Israeli state over in the Middle East? Jesus said, Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. 
I think I'll believe Jesus. What do you think? All right, back to Hebrews 11. Verse 5, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Ooh, maybe we should take a look at that. Now, there was two sets of Enoch's in the Bible the one line from Cain, and the other line from Seth. And let's see. But in Genesis 5.24, the one from Seth, not Cain, and all the days of... Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Genesis 5.23. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Huh, okay, God took him, right? By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found, because God had translated him. For because before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, but without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being, verse 7, By faith Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Now, when people try to tell you about the Noahide laws, um, ask them where that is in the Bible. Yeah, where are the laws of Noah in the Bible? Um, they don't exist. It's a figment of the imagination of a, in the mind of a Jew that hates Jesus, by the way. It's not in the Bible. They call it their oral traditions. Oh, it was handed down orally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I don't think so. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whither he went. You know, uh, Abraham was called the friend of God. How's that for a testimony? You know, and when he was told to go, he, he didn't know where he was going. He says, okay, I'll do it. Verse 9, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. See, Sarah was what, like 90 years old when she uh, conceived Isaac? Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the sea shore innumerable. In Genesis chapter 2 and verse 14, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. Um, from what I understand, it means the Lord will provide. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. 
And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn. For, uh, think about this for a second. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. Now, the word angel means messenger. Was this an, an, an actual angel like Lucifer was or like Michael or Gabriel? This angel is saying, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. So this angel is saying, basically, by myself have I sworn, saith the Lord. So this angel is not, I don't think, a lot of people think that this is Christ in his pre-human form. Because it, angel means messenger. And if you don't believe it, it it's, it's just something to think about. You know, I'm not telling you I'm right or, you know, you're wrong or whatever. But here it is, you've got the angel saying, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, children, I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Now, do the Jews fulfill this promise? Are the Jews multiplied as the stars in the heavens and the sand which is upon the seashore? A few measly million Jews. Does this fulfill? Do they fulfill this? Um, who possesses the gate of the enemies? Um, let's see. Do the Jews possess the gates for the enemy? What nations had control of the air? What nations nations have had control of the oceans? The gates. Of the enemies think about it you know people say oh British Israelism that's evil it's wrong well I tell you what the Portuguese the Spanish and then the English and more recently in history the United States uh, ruled the oceans still do do you know England ruled the waves for hundreds of years think about it they possess the gates of their enemies. You know why uh, one of the big reasons why Germany lost World War II? Britain's Navy. Yeah, it blockaded all the sea routes. You know why Germany lost World War I? The sea routes. Are the Jews multiplied like the sand on the seashore? No. I don't think so. So... Now, if you wanted to tell me the Jews are part of one tribe, fine. But are you going to tell me that they, they fulfill all the promises God made to Israel? No, absolutely. They don't. Who does? Take a look and find out. But that's beyond the scope of this study. Hebrews 11:12. Therefore sprang there even of one, as him, as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore, innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, mm. and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims, on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. Oh, what country? 
And truly, if they'd been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Ooh, God hath prepared for them a city. Let's take a look at that. Well, if you want to read about the New Jerusalem, real simple. Just go to Revelation chapter 3 and verse 12. He that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. And Revelation 21 and verse 2. And I, John, saw the holy city. You know, it's funny. I, I just got in an argument with somebody. They said, oh, well, this John in, in this Revelation is not the John, the apostle that walked with Jesus. Really? Yeah, they want you to think this, this Revelation was written hundreds of years after uh, after the crucifixion. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. All right, so. Let's see what we got here. Uh, all right, back to Hebrews 11, verse 16. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. By faith, Abraham. You're going to hear that word, by faith, a lot. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And, he, um, of course, the Muslims say, no, 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 the Bible's wrong. He was going to offer up Ishmael. I, you know what? When the, when, the, when the Old Testament says Isaac and the New Testament says Isaac, I believe Isaac. I don't believe the Koran. I'm sorry, I don't. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. You see, Ishmael was not to be the promised seed. Isaac was. Verse 19. Accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. You see, Abraham was told by God to sacrifice and kill his kill Isaac. And he was willing to do it. But he uh, he didn't have to because God provided a sacrifice. A ram with its horns caught in a thicket. Verse 20. By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning, concerning things to come. Verse 21, by faith Jacob, when he was a dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph. And uh, let's see, that was Ephraim and Manasseh. Blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon the top of his staff. By faith Joseph, when he died, made, men, made mention of the departing of the children of Israel and gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. What was the king's commandment? Pharaoh of Egypt said that all the children of the Hebrews should be cast into the river. Either they would drown or be eaten by a crocodile. So... 
I wonder why they wanted to do, why, I wonder why Satan wanted all the Hebrew children, the male children, not the females, the male children. Why they wanted them all dead. Verse 24. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the recompense of of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land which the Egyptians, a saying to do, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I say more? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephne, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions. Remember Daniel? Stopped the mouths of lions quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Ooh, boy, that would be, that's racist, isn't it? Turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others, others were tortured not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Did you know that there's a resurrection and a better resurrection? Women receive their dead raised to life again. Think of um, Lazarus. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. They were cut in half, people. According to legend, Isaiah was cut in two with a saw. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with a sword, they wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins. Isn't that what uh, John the Baptist did? Wandered about in goatskins? They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute. That means having nothing. Being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise. God, having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. All right, go to chapter 12. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, Oh, yeah. There's going to come a cloud of witnesses, people. When Jesus returns, there's going to be a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin 
which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the right uh, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Oh, I guess we'll read the rest of this chapter. Verse 3. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Well, that's the church today, too. You know, they don't care that children are being kidnapped and murdered, Pizzagate and what have you. That stuff's real, people. I don't care what the TV stations that hate Jesus say about it being fake news. The only thing fake is the garbage that they're peddling on the television. Ye have not resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Boy, I've been rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Boy, he must really love me. He's spanked me many a times. Of course, I deserved it. Verse 7, If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, wherefore all are partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. Wherefore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? For they verily for a few days chasten us, chasten us after their own pleasure. But he, for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. That's a dirty word in the church. Holiness? Oh, boy. Start talking about holiness, being like, being like God the Father, holy. Ooh. Verse eleven. Now, no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised thereby. Wherefore, lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees, and make straight paths for your feet, lest that which is lame be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see God, uh, shall see the Lord. Wow, did you read that? Follow peace with all men, and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Ooh, holiness, if you don't have it, you're not going to see the Lord. Ooh, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person, as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. I did an entire study on Esau. And if you uh, want to listen to the black Hebrew people, uh, Hebrews, so-called, uh, they want to tell you that white, white people are the people that God hates. I did an entire study on Esau. Go to my channel, do the search. Esau. It's funny, the Jewish encyclopedia says that uh, 
Esau, Edom is in modern Jewry today. Josephus, a Jewish historian in Roman times, said that uh, King Herod was of that line. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. God rejected him. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. You see, Esau was the firstborn. He was to get a blessing from the Lord. But he despised his birthright. He didn't care about it. A bowl of beans was more important to him than the blessing of the Lord. Of course, he hated God. and Maybe God's returning the favor. I don't know. Verse 18. For ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, and that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, which which voice they that heard entreated that the word should not be spoken to them any more, for they could not endure that which was commanded. And if so much as a beast touched the mountain, it shall be stoned or thrust through with a dart. Now this is talking about when uh, Moses was up on the mountain, the mount of God, getting the, uh, the Ten Commandments. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. But ye are come unto Mount Sion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who, re, who refused him that spake on earth, how much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven? That's a good question. If you don't escape from him that speaks from earth, you're definitely not going to speak, get, uh, get away from him that speaks from heaven. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet one more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. And there's two types of fire, people. There's fires for the believers that burns away our unrighteous works and leaves only our righteousness. And then there's the lake of fire, which burns up the unrighteous. So, all right, well, I think that this is going to be the end of part two of suffering. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse and chapter 12 the faith chapter. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth after me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.